today we are actually going to be making some outfits for my smart dolls and BJDs uh, using only what I have on hand and it's in order to make something to celebrate a certain character's birthday at the end of the month. So let's head over to the art desk. And yes, we are going to make this particular outfit of Miku Hatsune's from her 2021 birthday. It's one I, I actually really like. It's a simple design, so I should be able to utilize what I have on hand to make it. And the fact that it's got cat ears. Now, the thing is, we're not only doing Miku. We're doing the fanloid Mikio as well, since he also shares the same birthday. Some people say that they are twins in lore and such, but I like this particular design of Miko's. Well, I found uh, the base pieces like tie and such, and then I added the cat ears on. So I did sort of uh, some digital tweaking in order to tie the two together because I really do like this simple design. Lucky for me, I already have the Miku uh, wig. It just doesn't have pink tips, so I'm going to have to add that in. And I'm going to have to do some alterations to a BJD that I custom made earlier. This is my version of Mikyo right now. So we're going to be alternating. Uh, alter, uh, I'm stumbling on my words here. <laughs> but we're going to make some alterations to make him look like Miko in the design concept. So we're going to add a nice pigtail uh, pointtail to the back here. So it will be Attachable, so I'll be able to take it off or add it on later on. And of course, we're going to have to make the clothes. So this is the BJD, and of course, we're going to be using one of my smart dolls as Miku. I start my process by going through my boxes of fabric scraps in order to find appropriate material in order to create these two outfits. I'm going to need primarily black, but also need a bit of white in order to serve as Miku's top and Miku's vest. But majority of the items, I'm going to need black stretch material. And I'm hoping that in my fabric scraps, I have enough in order to serve as both. Once the fabric has been selected, then it's a matter of making rough cuts in order to fit the dolls. I'll be needing this white material to serve as the top for Miku and Miku's vest. I chose this material because it's got some light speckles and a good amount of stretch actually. So it'll be easy to serve as the top and Miku's vest and still look quite coordinated. Once the basis of Miko's vest is set, I realize I'm going to need some backing material in order to get the flipped collar on the actual piece. Plus, I need to stabilize it because this vest actually does not need to be as stretchy as the top for Miku. So I dig through my stash once again and find some backing material that will serve quite well as Miku's vest.
Okay, we now basically have the top and the vest assembled. It's just a matter of finishing up the sewing of the two and then adding additional adornments in order to make them fitted quite nicely. I'll be adding onto both pieces a corseted back in order to allow adjustment so that they can be fit properly. And of course, since Miku's outfit also has this big bow on the back, it makes sense to tie that into the actual corset. white parts now actually complete. We move on to what is probably the more complicated section, the shoes. I take templates that I made from previous shoes 
and begin sewing them around the actual doll form. I'm using my BJD because, well, he's cheap and easily replaceable. <laughs> so I can actually get away with doing all the work on him since I don't have an actual shoe last in order to create these shoes. I start by actually sewing together the top portion which includes the back piece and the tongue and of course lace it up and then begin sewing it around the foot before actually moving on to the sole of the shoe which I also cut out of leather. I sew on a small heel and then actually attach the sole with its connected heel to the bottom of the shoe using hot glue. Before I actually attached the shoe around the doll's foot, I made sure that I had created an insert to first attach to the doll's foot as a little break between the shoe's bottom and the bottom of the actual foot. So this will prevent actual sticking to the doll.
With the soles attached, I then begin wrapping around ribbon to cover the break in between the shoe and the sole to make it look a little more cohesive. I start off with pink ribbon and then cover it with some sheer sparkly ribbon. This will give a more iridescent look as well as additional reflectiveness. With the shoes now complete, I move on to the black pieces of the outfits. I'm starting with Miku's stockings, and I'll be topping them off with a combination of the pink ribbon and sheer organza in order to create a cohesive look with what I did on the shoes. And of course, I use a lighter in order to burn the ends, sealing them so that I don't have that extra bulk when sewing them onto the actual stocking piece. attaching the combination of ribbons to the top of the pattern pieces for the stockings. I continued this combination to the bottom of her armband sleeves in order to continue the cohesive look.
I also attached the same organza pink ribbon combo to the bottom of the skirt panel before sewing each piece up their respective side seams. Of course, to help me attach the elastic to the skirt, I had put it onto an old spool of ribbon while it's underneath the elastic. This will allow me to adjust the positioning of the fabric for the skirt around the elastic band and keep it stretched enough to go around the doll's hip without taking too much strain on my hands while I'm doing the hand sewing. Most of the parts now actually complete, I move on to creating the cat ear headsets for Miku and Miko. I would take apart an old spool of ribbon, cut it in half, and that will actually be used as the headband for the cat ear headsets. And then onto craft foam, I cut out some circles to serve as the ear covers. I utilize what I have on hand for the dimensions of the spools as well as getting the ear covers just right. With all my pieces now cut out of foam, I proceed to cover the headband pieces with some ribbon in order to make sure that they blend in with the rest of the headset. And of course, with the headbands now covered with the ribbon, I cover it 
with the foam pieces, making sure that the rings go on the inside of the headband in order to cover up the ears and not pull away so far from the actual headband piece. Then I proceed to add some dimension to the ear muff sections by adding on some blue beads from a, an old beaded curtain and then covering that with the additional foam pieces that I'll put the paw print designs on with some glow-in-the-dark puffy paint. With the headsets now complete, I move on to the decorations that will be at the hip. I pull out a couple of chains to serve as the decorations of the hip, as well as some earring or lobster clasps to connect them to the belt for Miku, including making up the actual belt buckle. And then Proceed to attach these little crystals to serve as the backings for the actual paw print charm. With the hip decorations now assembled, I wrap around some of the pink ribbon that I used throughout the whole piece to serve as neckties for Miku and Miku. I simply cut these into place, sew down the tips and the ends in order to make the points, and of course sealing the ends with the lighter. That way they don't fray. I'll then use the same puffy paint that I used to decorate all the other accessories with a simple paw print design. Now we're on to the final bits, actually creating the hair extensions. Both Miku's wig and Miku's hair are not quite long enough. So I see about utilizing an old hair piece for, that I bought from the dollar store in order to extend Miku's hair. Just a warning. I never actually ended up using this. I ended up destroying it. So I had to go back later and use some actual wool in order to extend Miku's hair. But I used the same process as before, tying on little strips of yarn onto a longer length and then brushing it out in order to get that fluffiness. And of course I alternate with the pink tips and the majority of it being the cyan and of course a little other mixture that I used in Miko's hair previously. It was a shame that I couldn't get this hair wrap to actually work because it just ended up tangling. But I now know for later on 
Plus it didn't actually blend in with his hair that much. So it was good to use the same wool that I previously put onto his hair. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future videos of the doll cosplays that I create. If you want to see these live as they're being constructed, tune in on Twitch at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. I hope you enjoyed this process. Now let's head over to the showcase and see these beautiful dolls in action.